Hello everyone and welcome to Vintage Story. As promised we are going to play this game. As you can see from the picture on the main menu, it's basically some kind of a Minecraft clone. In fact, if I remember correctly, it, this one actually used to be a Minecraft mod, but it became so big and expensive that uh, it had to be made into a, a standalone game. I might be wrong on that one, just let me know in the comments. So, uh, basically the idea of this game is that it's an extremely unforgiving survival game. So unforgiving that wild animals can basically kill you in two hits at the start. Yeah, so in the beginning we will have to run away instead of fighting anything. We are going to play in single player of course. Uh, this is basically my single player world and this is just a test world. What we are going to do is create a new one. We are going to play in standard difficulty. Let's call this one, for example, YouTube Land. We are going to customize it. I already have a seed selected for this one. But we are going to change a couple options. So, let's see. I am going to change the death punishment. By default we drop everything we have on us when we die, but honestly it's not all that difficult to get the items back, it just takes time and effort, it, it's just more, more annoying than anything else, it's not exactly a challenge, so I'm just to save us time I'm just going to keep everything, which of course makes the next option completely irrelevant. Next up, we are going to change, let's see, all these are left on default. Ah yes, the Pro Peak Node Search Radius. Don't worry about what this one does, I'm going to explain it when we get to it, but we are going to set it to 8 blocks. Next up, I'm going to change the Micro Block Chiseling. This is basically we can change the shape of uh, certain blocks. By default, this is only for stone, wood and bricks, but I would like to set it to most cubic blocks so we can sculpt things a bit more freely. Next up, we are going to change the color accurate world map. This is because by default the game has a bit of a monotone color scheme for the game map. If we set it to uh, color accurate, it's going to be a little bit more easy to tell things apart on the map. Next up, ah yes, temporal gear respawn uses. Basically there is a special item in the game that we can use to reset our uh, respawn location. And by default, it only allows us to respawn 20 times. I think I will set it to infinite, just you know. To make things a little bit easier and also I'm going to change the sleeping during temporal storms. Honestly temporal storms are interesting the first time around but after that it's not all that interesting. If we had to we can just dig ourselves into a hole and seal ourselves in and it's not all that it's not exactly a big difficulty thing so if we have to we can just sleep through it. Everything else we are going to leave on default, I think. Yeah, sure. Apply and create world. And now we are in the game. I have a pre-made character which we, I can recall with this last selection button. This is going to be our little guy. I set the uh, voice of the character to be the oboe with the medium pitch, because this one is, I think, the closest to how the dupes sound in Oxygen Not Included. The other voices are a little bit too annoying, I think. Next up, we are going to choose our class. Uh, I can already tell you that we are going to play as a commoner, because this one doesn't give us any positives or negatives. But I'm just going to show you the other ones. Hunters are basically the ranged class. Malefactors are sneaky, clockmakers are tinkerers, 
the black guards are the the melee class and tailors are for making clothes but as i said we are going to play as a commoner this one will lock us out of certain special uh, recipes but if we have to we can enable them later it's fine so confirm class and now we are in the game as i said in the intro we are basically trying to survive and work our way up from the stone age up to the steel age and as luck would have it we spawn right next to a trader they come in these little caravans let's see who are you you are great the agricultural trader uh, yeah this is what we can buy this is what we can sell but since we have nothing, we can't really do anything with him. All we can do is open our map and mark his location. This is a trader and he is a agricultural trader. Save and now we can find our way back to him if we have to. And also to the south of us we have these which look like ruins and yeah I think they are. Along the way, we can pick up these pieces of stone that has two colors, gray. The gray one actually means this is a flint stone, which we can use to make very primitive stone tools. So, these ruins sometimes have... Ah, there is, there is one. These vessels, which we can break. And we have some goodies inside. This one had flex fibers. That's very good. Let's look around and see if we can find anything else. Oh, there's another one. Seeds. And we have some turnip seeds. Very nice. Also, there is a hole here. Okay. Um... By default, you are not able to actually break stones with your hand, but these are not a regular stone, these are cobblestones, which we can actually break. Now, this is a forage vessel, which gave us more flex fibers and some... What's this? Horsetail poultices. Okay. These are healing items, by, basically. So... We need to break things so we can actually get down. Anything interesting down here? Mm, not really. Except this one, another seed vessel. Rice seeds, very nice. And I think this is it for this little basement area. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I want to place these on top of the block we were standing on. There we go. We can come out now. Any other vessels we can find? Let's see. No. I think we have exhausted this area uh, later on we can return and dig up these bony soils but I don't want to carry them around right now because our inventory space is very limited so yeah I think we can call this place basically exploited also I did yes I did notice that this area was a different color that is because this is fire clay uh, I don't want to carry this around right now, but we can note it down and come back to it later. Fire clay, I like to use this symbol. So, fire clay. Save. And also, this area also looks a bit different, a bit darker. Which means, yes, it is actually peat. 
Later on we can dig this one up as well, because this is a very good fuel source. Uh, use this one and this one and call this one beat. Now this area is actually rather nice, except for one thing, we don't really have any trees around. Which can limit our options. So I think we can actually keep looking around a bit. Um, what we should be doing right now is to look for cattails, which we can find next to water sources. But I don't see any anywhere. We are going to need those cattail reeds to actually make some baskets so we can actually have an inventory space. Because right now... Oh, there it is. Okay, we have some here. Right now, our inventory is this space, but it's completely unusable because we have no spaces. This is for the cra for crafting, but that's it. We have The only inventory space we have right now is the hot bar. That's it. What we can do... Okay, first things first. If we hit these by hand, sure, we can actually harvest the cattail reeds, but this will destroy the, uh, the roots. That is not ideal. What we can do instead is use these flint stones we picked up and net ourselves a flint knife blade. We remove the relevant pieces of voxels and get a shape of the knife out of it and there it is okay we are full of stuff so let's drop the cobwebs and we have a flint knife blade right now it's unusable to make it usable we are going to need uh, some sticks but sticks can only be found sometimes in these bushes or under trees and yeah we are lucky these branchy leaves actually had one stick put this in the crafting space put the stick under it and now we have a knife we can use this knife to harvest the cattails and leave the roots behind so they can regrow later which is Needless to say, a very useful thing. We can also use the knife to harvest the actual roots and replant them somewhere else, but our inventory space is very limited right now, so I don't want to clutter it with too many things. We are going to need at least 10 cattail reeds to make one basket, but we have done here 4 slots for these items. So we are going to need 40 of these cattail reeds. Okay, we have 18 and we have no more cattails, so we can make one basket. Let's do that. This is done like this. And this is one hand basket. We put it here and now we have three inventory spaces. Later on, of course, we are going to have better inventory items which have more spaces but this is the best we can do right now except we have more cattails here also by the way the cattail mm, the roots can be used as a fuel so uh, fuel what are, what are i saying as a food source but it is better to actually pick them up and replant them near your house so you have a ready source of cattails if you have if you want Eating them is a bit wasteful. They are good in, a, in an emergency, but I don't like to do that. Okay, we can make the last three baskets. Perfect. And we have the maximum amount of inventory space that we can make right now. Now, let's see, 
This is another peat bog. Let's note it down. This one, this one. Let's call it peat. Save. There we go. And we have some trees here, but not too many. And they are not the kind of trees that I want. I would like to have some pine trees if we have, if we can. Um, let's go to the west, I think. Okay, we don't need any cattails right now because we have the hand baskets that we needed. Also, as we move along, we can organize our inventory, put the seeds there, we can put this there, there, there. We don't need these small stones right now. The flint stone can go there and like this, and that's it. In the meantime, as we go along, we can pick up more flint stones, pick up some sticks if we find any. Also, let's keep an eye out for berries or mushrooms. Let's see. Let's hover over it and it says when eaten, 80 satiation. It doesn't say if that we are going to lose any health, so this is actually an edible mushroom. Great. I think these mushrooms are actually... Yeah, they are marked as vegetables. There are, I think, five, let's see. Yeah, five different uh, food types in the game. Fruits, veggies, grains, proteins, and dairy. Basically, as you fill up those uh, different food types, you will actually increase your maximum health. By default, the maximum health is 15, but as we fill up those food types, oh, nice area. So as we fill up those food types, we are going to increase the maximum health. And this area doesn't really satisfy what I am looking for. There is a wolf. Don't get too close to dangerous animals at the start. That guy can kill us in two hits. Ah, oh, there it is. Some berries, very nice. The berries are classified as fruits. So, the green bar right down here, just above the baskets, that is our hunger meter. And as you can see, berries don't exactly fill it up too much, neither are the mushrooms. But these little bars are now a little bit more filled up. And instead of 15, it's 15.3 health. As those bars get filled up more and more, our maximum health will increase. Not by much, but by a noticeable amount. What is... Oh, this is the one we have already ransacked. Uh, let's see, maybe this one looks a bit more foresty. Also... Oh yeah, this is the one we already marked down. That was the fire clay. Let's check out that area to the west. And it seems we have another peat bug. So let's mark it down. Early game is a lot of this finding stuff and marking them down so we can exploit them later. Hi chickens. Be very careful as you move around. Keep an eye on the ground because Sometimes there can be sinkholes and you don't want to fall down. Orange oak bullet, let's see. Ah, this is also edible, very good.
Okay, now this one is a bit more forested area. I think we might be able to settle down here. Let's see. Yeah, it's not too bad. Now we have a choice to make. We can either dig into the ground to create a hidey hole or build something. Let's see, it's already four o'clock and the sun is going down. So I think for now, the best option for us is to actually just dig a hole and call it a temporary home, at least for this night. For that, we are going to need a shovel. So let's make a shovel head. You don't have to take off every single voxel, just the ones you need, because this will disappear if I take this one off, as you can see. And there we go, we have a shovel head. Now we just need another stick. Combine them together and we have a shovel. Any better place we can call home? Mm, maybe... No, this one is already... I can see stone. Let's just dig this one. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. What we can do is to dig up the dig out a little bit of a room and then use the dirt as a building block. There. Yeah, I think this will do for now. Next up, we are going to need to harvest some dry grass. Because we are going to use that uh, both for fire and for sleeping. Also, we have to use a knife for this one. If we just used our hand, we would only destroy the grass. By using the knife, we are actually cutting it neatly and creating dry, dry grass. Plus, it leaves behind these uh, short pieces of grass that they will grow back later. Okay, 40 should be enough. Next up, we are going to need to make three hay blocks. Which we can combine into a hay bed. Which you can place down here. Next up, we are going to need some lighting. But for that, we are going to need some sticks as well. So it's time to break more of these bushes down and hope that we can actually find some branchy leaves. Uh, yeah, there are some, but not nearly enough. Oh, there we go, this is better. Okay. That should be enough. So, put the hay grass on the top, the sticks under them, and we can make some torches. Next up, we are going to need some way to actually light these torches, and that is done by making this pattern, which will create a fire starter. Basically, two sticks that we can rub together, and that with the friction create enough heat to light the fire. Next up, we are going to need to 
place down these torches light one with the fire stick which you can put away and then use that torch to light the rest of them there we go now we have four lit torches the good thing is that uh, um, uh, let's see how to explain this by default these torches can last for 48 hours but they only count down if we have them out if we don't have them out they don't count down so that's fine we can just put them away and they are going to be okay let's place one of them here for inside lighting next up we need two at least two more dirt blocks to actually seal ourselves in for the night yeah now this is still light out so we don't have to worry about enemies spawning yet uh, what we can do oh there we go totally by accident i had the torch out so sub, uh, submerging it in the water actually extinguished it what we need to do is to light it again we had one lit two lit and another one that is why it's a good idea to actually only have one in the hot bar and the rest in the inventory because in the inventory they don't get uh, soaked we can look around a bit before nightfall maybe find some food because we are getting real hungry let's see jack-o-lantern are you edible no this is not edible uh, it says when eaten it will fill us up, but it will also take has, uh, six health off. So don't eat it. I said, don't eat it. Uh, I am getting real close to actually resor resorting to eating cattail roots, but that is a last resort. Let's see if we can find any bushes with berries on them. Also, we can pick up the sticks as we find them. Mm -hmm. I don't see any berry bushes around, which is quite unfortunate. And it's getting real dark now, so we should really get back to our hidey hole yeah this is a little bit unfortunate but i think we are going to be okay for one night yeah sure okay we are still in so we are actually safe uh, let's see what we can do before we go to sleep what we can do is maybe make some more tools so we already have a shovel and a knife but the knife is already pretty banged up so let's make another one and let's make an axe anything else we need oh yeah we definitely going to need a spear and our inventory is already completely full so it's already 9 30 in the evening so i think we are going to go to sleep and wake up in the morning this uh hay bed is only allowing us to sleep for seven hours so we might wake up a little bit too early 
let's see. Yeah, it's 3.40 in the morning. Let's see. Is it light out? Uh, almost. I think it's actually light enough that we can go outside. Plus, I don't hear anyone outside, so it should be okay. There we go. Yeah, it's safe. That's fine. Now, which way should we go? Let's try this area because it's still close to the forest. So let's go south. Also, we can see now, so we don't need to have, have the torch out. It will only get soaked if, if we have it in our hand. If we don't, and we still fall in water, it's going to be okay. This new moon. Let's see this area. What does it look like? Hmm. It's not too bad. And we have another trader down here. Let's pay him a visit. Also, keep an eye on these stones on the ground. Because if you if you see some of them with different colors, that means that there might be ores under the ground. Ah, there we go. We had just found some plants, but we don't have the room except we can throw these ferns out. We don't need them. Okay, so, rye, definitely. Uh, we only managed to claim two seeds, but that's two more than zero. And we have some blue clay. Very good. Let's mark this one down as, what? Oh, oh it's the food, that's fine. It's going to take a long time to actually start that, so I am not that worried. So, blue clay. Let's use this color. Blue clay. Okay, let's talk to the trader real fast. And then find some food. You are an artisan trader. They are going to sell us some uh, nice looking vessels, some tapestry, but we cannot do anything about that right now. What we need to do is to find some food and quick. Okay, so this is a nice big maple forest with a very bright sunrise over this lake so we need to find some food and quick oh there we go cranberries very good oh wolf 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 don't get too close to wolves And we have some red currant, very good. Some black currant as well. And that should give us enough food to fill up the hunger bar. There we go, it's full. And we are halfway done to filling up the fruit needs. And we have a big, big sinkhole. You do not want to fall down on, into these. Apart from the fall damage, there can be some things down there and we have some pine trees as well i think that settles it this is where we are going to settle down it's a nice big open area we have a trader nearby 
We have some trees. Some bunnies. Some nice berry bushes. Yeah, sure. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's replant this bush. There we go. For a second I thought it was a branch leaves. So, let's see. Again, we have a choice to make. What do we want to build our house out of? And the thing is, a mod hut is not exactly the nicest thing in the world. So, I think we are just going to cut down these trees with our axe. This is a maple tree. And I think we are standing on clay. After this, we are going to mark it down. Let's see, this is fire clay, perfect. Fire clay. And save. Okay, later on we are going to dig this one up, but right now we have no space for it. Uh, let's see. We need more trees. We can make some room by placing these dirt blocks. Anything else we can throw out? Not really. Okay, oh, another sinkhole, but this one is not too dangerous. We can climb out of this one. But again, there might be things down there that we don't want to mess with right now. We can actually mix and match the different wood types, but for now I think we are going to just stick, stick to maple. Ooh. Are you an oak? Yes, you are. Oh, 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 oh. Run, 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 run. You see? They hit us two, uh, twice and we are already very, very close to that. Can you please leave me alone? There's a bunny. Go after that one. Okay. That was close. Now we have to use these portices for HP. And there we go. Oh, barely halfway done. To, uh, barely halfway to maximum health okay with all that excitement out of the way let's go back to cutting trees so the wolves are now busy over there which means we should be more or less safe here Okay, we have almost three stacks of wood. I think that should be enough for a small lock cabin. Okay, there's the wolf. It's brown color, so it blends into the surroundings, which is not exactly ideal. I think we can build on this small hill here. Also, that's a big sinkhole. Hmm, let's see. If I'm honest, I think I will dig up some of this and use it to plug that sinkhole because it's right next to the building site, so I don't want to step out of bed and fall down if we, if we can help it. Okay. 
let's make sure that we know that this is here so we can mark it with a small dirt pile okay so don't dig here this one this one is a bit more manageable i think so we can build on this small hill i think let's see we can yeah i think this will do let's see one two let's just cut down the grass I think a five by five should be okay. One, two, three, four, five, and there we go. One, two, three, four, five. Let's make it five by seven. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Okay. Now, placing these blocks actually will change their orientation based on where we are looking. We've been looking down, so they are standing right up. But if we place it on the side, they will be placed like this. Okay, this amount of wood might not be enough because I might be overbuilding a little bit. Yeah, we need a lot more. And our axe is already getting used up, so I think I will nap another one. Uh, axe head. We can just place this one in the inventory, and as this one gets used up, it will automatically get, get replaced. Okay, uh, the wolves should still be down there. Let's make sure we don't get too close. Uh, this one seems to have a lot of wood we can use. Ah, there we go. Did you see? We just used up the axe and it got automatically re replaced with the new one. I think I will cut down this one as well. Just to make sure that we have enough wood. Okay. We should have enough to finish the building by now. Okay, the walls are done. Now we just need a roof. Um, I think for now I'm just going to use dirt for the roof also we have a couple more holes to plug okay so oh, 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 be careful since we have a five by seven little hot I think 35 should be enough. Okay, this got used up. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to finish it by hand. There we go. 
Okay, we are not going to go over the edges just on the top. And we have a nice little lock cabin. Next up, we will need a door. The doors... Okay, before we go under the door, let me show you a very, very neat little thing. I know that we can make doors out of sticks, but I don't know the exact recipe. What we can do is hover over the stick and press the H button. This will give a bring up the survival handbook and this is extremely useful. This will tell you where we can find sticks and what we can use sticks for. We are going to need these sticks to make a very crude door, which is this one, crude door. Click on it and it will bring up the uh, encyclopedia entry for that one. And it will tell us that we are going to need three sticks here, two logs here, and an X here. And that will give us a door, which we can now place down. Just like, oh, come on, there we go. And we have a door. Now the thing is, this crude door is not actually, well, let's call it airtight. Not exactly, you know, airtight, but this one doesn't really create a room. To actually create a room, we need to enclose these spaces completely, but this one doesn't actually act as a seal. So this one doesn't actually be considered a room. Let's see, how many glass do we have? 17, yeah, let's just use the knife. I just want to get rid of the grass inside, but we can also get some grass along the way. The grass is cut down. Next up, let's create a fire pit. What we can do by taking the grass, crouching, right click, and we have a fire pit in construction. To finish it, we are going to need some firewood. What we can make by doing this and creating the firewood. Next up, we are going to need the firewood and place it on top of the fire pit. And now it is done. And the th good thing about firewood is that we can actually stock it, uh, stockpile it like this. Very, very handy. Next, we are going to need to actually light the fire. But I think I will hold on that for now because we don't actually need the fire. We can also place down our bad another neat thing in this game is that we can actually uh, put our tools next to walls so we have the fire starter in our hand we can crouch hold shift as well right click and now this is set against the wall you can also do this with our other tools like this it's very very handy for early tool storage but we need this right now okay what else yeah i think what we can do is maybe go for more reeds from the nearby lakes if we can find any because we can use those reeds to make some reed chests Let's see, we have none over here, and a big sinkhole here, we need to avoid it. No cattails here either, hmm, let's see, let's try our luck this way. Okay, we have a couple of cattails over there. It 
In fact, I will harvest the roots as well and replant them closer to our house. Now, I don't believe that these has to have to be replanted near water. So we can have a small cattail garden next to our house if you have if you want to. Okay, that was 16 cattails. We can lay them out like this or not. Let's see. We are going to need raid chests. Oh yeah, we need three instead of two. So this is not enough. Let's see. Any more nearby? Oh yes. Okay, we only need 24, so I think this will be enough. Also, oh yes, we have some plants we can replant a bit later. We could wait for them to mature, but I think it's better if we plant them ourselves because they are going to be a lot more fruitful. Also, this is a dead end. Okay, I think two stacks are enough. In fact, it's more than enough for now. What we can also do is take these uh, uh, berry bushes and replant them near our home. I like to make sure that we are replanting bushes that have uh, we just harvested, so we are not wasting too much uh, growth time. This way we are going to have um, a decent food source near our home. It will take a long time for them to actually grow back, but you know, it's better to have them nearby than to have them scattered all around the green game world. Next up, let's stack the peat in the corner. There we go. Let's eat some food. Also, why we have some daylight. Okay, we have three walls now. Great. I think I will plant these cattails just behind the house. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Ah, whatever. Okay, now we have some cattails just growing behind the house. Okay, and... Oh, can you hear that? I think we have a rift nearby that just came online. Okay, let's see, let's put this here, for example, so we can actually stuff things in there that we don't need on us at the moment. So let's take a look at this sound. There it is. Can you see it? That brown vortex. That is a temporal rift. Basically it's kind of a portal between worlds but only things can come out we cannot go inside. 
as the night falls, enemy enemies will come out of it. And uh, can you see this gear in between the hat and the satiation bar? That is our centimeter or temporal stability. If we get too close to this rift, can you see? It started spinning real fast and it took 4% of our sanity. That is not exactly ideal. Oh, wolves, 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 please stay away. Thank you. Oh. Okay, they need to go away. Oh, okay, so temporal stability regenerates over time. But having that rift nearby is not a, exactly a good thing. But it it goes comes and goes so oh, come on wolves please stay away. What we can do is open one block. Can we see anything? I'm just going to light this fire pit. Yeah, and I think we are going to retire for the night. Okay. This is really disconcerting. Okay, maybe we can chase them away. If we damage them enough, they will flee. Come on, poke your head out. Maybe if we... Oh, okay. Maybe if we do this... There we go. We have four of them. Great. We just need to damage them enough to actually make them flee. If we can achieve that, we should have... Also, this is a drift drifter. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, the wolves are gone. Okay, whew. Okay, so those drifters that you have seen just now, they are the enemies that actually sp uh, come out of the, that uh, temporal rift. Since we are inside, they cannot do anything about us. What we can do is go to sleep and make them go away in the morning. Unfortunately, we have been damaged quite a bit. And healing takes a lot of food. So we are very, very hungry right now. Also, what um, are we doing with our hand? Can we stop, please? Nope, not really. <sighs> Anyways, I think this is all we really have time for because this recording has been going on for an hour now. I will try to uh, speed things along when things are getting a little bit boring, like when we are chopping trees or moving earth or something like that. So this episode, I don't think is going to be one hour long, maybe 45 minutes or something. But I will try to make this one a little bit more edited than usual. Anyways, I think this is all we have time for. So thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can leave a like, leave a comment, and maybe subscribe to the channel if you want. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye-bye.